Okay, so this is our zone two vegetable garden, our little round circle there where we had the initial disaster is our zone one. And we grow more bulk foods like beans and potatoes, sweet potatoes, poor poor. I'm putting moringa all down the middle of the beds and that's it. It's, it's a food garden and it's between the first two swales. So it's quite well protected. I put those acacia karoo trees to protect the fruit trees the other side of the swale and present the moides along that to protect those fruit trees. So it's quite well protected from the wind. And the soils are recovering much faster here than they did and that's because they weren't as severely damaged. So we are starting to get quite a lot of food. But long term, it's our forest that's going to be our, our food support. Those rows of trees, because we will have to protect them, we're building strips of forest on each side of them. But the forest will be useful as well. We're putting in a lot of indigenous trees. Like we'll, As we walk, I'll, I'll point them out, like forest mahogany and some bamboo. So they'll all be a resource, either bee forage or medicine or timber, or, but it'll create a forest effect and then the swale will become redundant. The swale at the moment catches any surface runoff, but once we have a forest, there'll be zero surface runoff. It'll all, like in a natural, healthy system, all the rainfall will permeate through the soil. There won't be any runoff. And where we realize that we're actually making progress in that direction, very, we were getting, very seldom getting water into the swales even already, and I thought, well, maybe it was overkill doing all these swales. But then we had a very heavy downpour one day when I'd been making swales up at the main farmhouse, and I wanted to see what was happening to them. So I put on my oil skins and wellingtons and, and walked around, yeah, and all these swales were full of water, but they weren't overflowing, they were just full of water. And as soon as I got off the, the farm and walking down to go to the, the main farmhouse at the top, there was water flowing across the, the, the grasslands there and down the hill and lost. So that had changed. This used to be like that and it was no longer like that. And another indicator that something had changed quite radically, you'll see a lot of guava trees. There's, there's one there behind us. It's actually flowering now. It gives quite a lot of fruit. And they are classified as invasive and you're not even supposed to have them. So I was being very law-abiding in the beginning and chopping them down and they would just come back again. I said, yeah, I'm struggling to get tree cover. These things are growing no matter what I do just left them. So I didn't, I just stopped chopping them. I didn't plant any, I didn't clean, I didn't manure and they are fruiting heavily here inside. But just outside our fence where they also the feral guavas, they don't produce any fruit. So it means we actually are fixing the water cycle. Yeah, the water is going into the soil, it isn't running away, which is what nature does. A healthy forest, a healthy grassland, all the rainfall permeates through the soil. A lot is held in the soil. It's held there, and because it's covered, the sun can't evaporate it. So each consecutive rain accumulates more and more water till it can't hold it all and drops it into the aquifer and charges the springs. And that's beginning to happen even on this piece of land after six years. So although we've struggled because the land was so degraded and they were valuable lessons, we can also see that the land is being fixed and in the future will be an abundant forest full of food.